Okay, okay, okay. So welcome, guys. Uh, so this video, uh, I'm talking about uh, group isomorphism theorem. So uh, before I start, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Okay, so uh, this is my uh, YouTube channel, and uh, you can check out like many mass media if you and uh, complex and uh, also computer science and also physics if you like the uh, set theory, complexity, differential geometry, or other interesting things. Uh, so before I start, uh, subscribe to my channel. Yeah. And also, you can check my group theory videos, uh, series videos. I will uh, post a link be below. Okay, so uh, this video I will prove the the three isomorphism theorem in the uh, group theory. In group theory. Okay. Uh. So. Uh. What I want. So. I mean. I mean, if you go to the uh, YouTube channel, right, and uh, you type the isomorphism theorem, that uh, you will see people uh, spend like 10 minutes to prove the first isomorphic and the second and the third. Uh, so I won't do that because I think the isomorphism theorem is very easy, so I will prove it uh, in very concise way, but uh, still 100% uh, rigorous. Okay. So let's talk about the first isomorphism theorem. Okay, so first isomorphism say that if you have a group G from H, and uh, which is a homomorphism, basically phi x y equals to phi x times phi y, and uh, then uh, the G modular kernel for phi will be isomorphic to uh, image H. Okay, so uh, this tells you that the kernel phi is a normal subgroup of G, and uh, okay, by the way, I use this is like triangular things to talk about normal subgroup, and I use the standard subsets to imply. So this is image phi. So image phi will be the normal, uh, orig ordinary subgroup of H. Okay. So uh, this is the result. Okay. And now let's talk about second isomorphism. So second isomorphism tell you that uh, if you have group H, uh, sorry, if you have a group G, and then uh, you have a subset, a uh, sub, uh, normal subgroup H, then uh, and you take A is also a normal subgroup of G. Then uh, there is a theorem that says that a quotient H intersection A will be isomorphic to H A quotient H. Okay, so this means that uh, H intersection A will be the normal subgroup of A, right? And uh, also H will be normal subgroup of H A. And finally, they are isomorphic. Okay, so this is the second isomorphism theorem. Okay, let's talk about third. Okay, so the third isomorphism theorem uh, is also interesting. Let me just quickly mention. So it means that if you have H isomorphic uh, subgroup A, uh, G, and you also have another subgroup, let's say A, uh, which is normal, so which is your basic H is normal A, basically you have a chain of normal subgroup, that uh, obviously that uh, and you will have A quotient H is normal to G quotient H. Moreover, you have G quotient H, I, uh, quotient A quotient H, right? Because we are, uh, by the third isomorphism tell us that this is a subgroup of this, so I can take the quotient, will be isomorphic to G quotient A. Okay, so, and also more, uh, any subgroup, right? So let me just write down every normal subgroup of G quotient H will be isomorphic to A quotient H for some A which is normal in uh, normal in G and the cover H. Okay, so basically this just tell you guys that uh, uh, you can view this computation as just simply remove this H. Okay, so this is the third uh, isomorphism theorem. Okay, so uh, usually people prove first and prove second and prove third. Uh, but uh, I, I, I don't, I think the easiest way okay so let me just write down a schedule so what I want to prove is that I, I first prove first in price second and I first and I prove first in price third then finally we prove first okay because first is easy okay and the basically the, so we prove first in price second first in price third and then finally we prove the first isomorphism theory then, then we prove everything okay okay so let's uh, quickly give the proof of a second. Okay, so now uh, in order to prove second, right? So second settings that uh, we have a subgroup called H, 
which is a uh, uh, normal subgroup a, uh, G, and then there is a subgroup A. Okay, so what else we can do, right? And then we want to prove what? We want to prove that H A quotient A is isomorphic to uh, our our uh, A quotient uh, H intersection A. Okay, so uh, remember that we have a uh, natural uh, uh, natural restriction, right? We from G to G quotient H. And uh, obviously this map is onto, right? Just by sending G to the call set GH. Okay, so uh, all we need to know is that the restrict uh, phi on A. Okay, so this is, we can restrict this homomorphism from uh, G to A, right? So we have G A, G H, right? Intersection on A. So basically we just take G we just take the same map, right? But uh, restricting our G to A. So I only care about a subgroup, okay? Okay, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I should remove this. Okay, so let, let's call this map phi A, okay? So the first thing is, things is that I want to ask, right? I want to ask, uh, what is the, uh, what is the, the kernel of phi A, right? So, Original kernel, original kernel phi, right, means that uh, phi map to zero just by definition is just h, right? So kernel phi intersection a will be will be what? Will be just h intersection a, right? Because I just restrict in the, the original group as a, right? So now uh, all the group G I have is basically this guy become a, right? So this. So it's obviously that, uh, so from the first isomorphism theorem, I know that uh, this group is a subgroup, it's a normal subgroup of original A. Okay, so now uh, we can use, uh, now we can use the first isomorphism theorem. So it's the original group A, quotient the uh, kernel, right, kernel, with isomorphic image of phi. And what is image? So original is GH, right? So original group is GH. But now G becomes A, right? So the total set will be AH, right? But uh, still quotient H, right? So AH quotient H, right? By definition. So image five just original GH, right? But now G be, be just focus on A, restriction on A, so it becomes AH quotient H. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is the second isomorphism theory uh, by the first. So just basically you just do this and apply the first. Right, everything is uh, okay, somewhat trivial. Okay, so let's prove the third isomorphism theory. Okay, I think everyone knows what, what's going on. I mean, I just want to. Uh, oh. Okay, so let's talk about the third. Okay. So, third, well, what is the third condition? So, third is that uh, if you have H is a normal subgroup of G, and also uh, H is a normal. A and G, basically you have this. Then no, uh, no, uh, basically you want to prove is that uh, A quotient H will be normal subgroup of G quotient H, and also G quotient A quotient A quotient H will be isomorphic to G quotient A. Okay, so this is uh, what we indeed to prove. Okay, so proof we also use the first isomorphism theory. So what should we do, right? So idea is that uh, let's construct a map from G quotient H to G quotient A. Uh, let's call it map phi. Okay, so how to uh, define this map? So this element is basically x h, right? So x belongs to G. So I can define this map to be x a. Okay. So the first things you need to show this this phi is a uh, is well defined. Okay. And the reason is that the uh, a is larger than h, right? So a is basically larger than h. So G quotient h will be larger, right? Because if you quotient larger things, then your group will be smaller. Okay, so remember that uh, f uh, in the left, right, in the left hand side, if x h equals y h means that uh, x y inverse belongs to h, right? But in the right hand side, that uh, means that x y inverse belongs to a. But x y inverse belongs to h will automatically satisfy x y inverse belongs to a. So this phi is well defined. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is very, uh, fairly easy. You just try to understand the notation. Okay, so uh, what's next? So the next is that, uh, the next is what? Next we just ask, 
the kernel, right? Just we try to use the first isomorphism theorem. So what's the kernel? What's the kernel, right? So remember that the uh, since your a is larger than h, oh, by the way, this map is on two, right? Because if you close your larger things, then your group will be small. Okay, so what is the kernel? So kernel is what? Kernel just kernel means that uh, just the set, right? Called x h. But uh, this map, right? V x h becomes zero, right? But V x h is what? It's x a, right? So what 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 this means is that uh, you ask, you ask what you ask each element in A. Uh, each element in A. Each element in A. They are different age. Right, because you you so x A equals zero means that x belongs to A. Right, but uh, you times H. So if xh equals yh, you have this. So you're asking about all the elements in A, which they are differ h by different h, right? So this is just a quotient h by definition. Okay, so from the group, so now uh, from the group isomorphism theorem, we have a g quotient h, quotient the kernel, kernel is a quotient h, will uh, become image, right? But this is unto, right? So image will be g quotient a. Okay, so this is just a proof. Okay, but uh, so third isomorphism is basically a proof. But uh, let's talk about uh, the final sentence, basically the uh, which is also uh, important. So every normal subgroup, every normal subgroup. Uh, let's see. Okay, so every normal subgroup of of G quotient H. Uh, is of the form a quotient h for some uh, h a g okay so basically i just want to uh, classify a uh, h normal subgroup g quotient h right it, uh, if i know all the normal subgroup of g then i should be uh, able to get this guy if for, just for this okay so the proof is basically uh, right just original proof. Uh, so, okay, so let's talk about proof. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's say we, we have something called A prime, right? So let's say A prime is H, H A1, H A2, keep going, right? So let's, so this is called, so let's say we have a normal subgroup called A, A prime this. So this A prime is basically form as H, A, H, A1, right? You need it enough, because each element in A quotient H will be A, H, right? So as this, okay? And uh, so by the so we know that uh, if this is the case, then A must be just the identity uh, union A1, right, A2, right? So this is just our set. Oh, sorry, this is our H. Sorry. Uh, so our our A will be H intersection HA1, a uh, union HA1, HA2, right, by definition. Okay, so the idea is that uh, we want to prove that A must be normal, right, because if I take a prime like this, then I can reconstruct a. So finally, we want to prove a is normal. So in order to prove a is normal, I want we want to prove that for x belongs to G, x a x inverse will become a, right? This is the definition. Okay, so the proof is basically uh, simple, right? Uh, the reason is what? The reason is that we we know, right? We know that uh, a prime is normal in a quotient h. So all of Okay, so what's the element in A prime? Right? It's basically called H A, right? Whether uh, A belongs to A. So each element in A quotient H, uh, it's basically uh, sorry. So this will A H A will be A belongs to A prime, and then this element called A H, let's say it can be written as Y H, which is Y belongs to A, right? So A prime is normal means that uh, Y H I uh, sorry. I should use. I should all use the left notation. So H Y H A H Y inverse right will be H A prime right. So for let's say this A prime belongs to A, and uh, this A belongs to A right. Basically, just write down a definition of the 
normal in this sense. Okay. So uh, once we do this, right, once we do this, then we can take. I mean, no one can stop me to take y to be identity, right? So I can take. Uh, let me see. So I can take. Uh, let me see. Okay, sorry. Uh, I can take the identity. Uh, in this h element, so we will get y h a y inverse. Uh, become uh, h a prime, right? Uh, but but uh, okay. So uh, this right. So oh sorry. So this so this is element, right? This is element that uh, this is a set, right? This set I just take h to be identity. So this set must uh is this right? So it must be this right? So this is for some a prime belongs to a. Okay. Uh, so what we have is what. Okay, so. Uh, remember this a is in a right so this tells us that the y a y inverse will belongs to will be a subset of a okay right because y h a y inverse right this is a so this set will be this set will be just subset of one of these right and at least all this guy right belongs to belongs to original a because this guy is just one of this uh, one of this guy, right? So y a y inverse belongs to original a, right? But this is a group, right? So they must have the same element. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I just uh, I should use x, right? But I use y here. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's the that's basically the proof. Uh, am I do something wrong? Yeah, should be correct. Okay, yeah, basically this is the proof. Okay, so that's finally let's prove the first isomorphism theorem. Okay, so finally, the first isomorphism theorem means that you have phi from G to H, right? And uh, what we want to prove is that the uh, uh, what? What we want to prove is that uh, the kernel is a normal subgroup of G. And the image is uh, also a subgroup of H. And the uh, final is that G coaching kernel will be isomorphic to image. Okay, so you can think a little bit and you, we will find all these theorems uh, almost trivial. And the reason is what? And the reason is that uh, let's, so I, the kernel phi is normal subgroup is trivial, right? Because uh, let's say Y, right? Because you have uh, X. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's ask about, uh, let's say, take x belongs to kernel, right? And then take y, x, y inverse, and then you, uh, and then you take phi, right? You get it phi y, phi x, phi y inverse, right? and then this is zero, it's identity, right? So phi y, phi y inverse, and you get the uh, phi of identity become identity, right? So that means y, x, y inverse still in a kernel. Right, so that means kernel is normal. And the image is a subgroup, which is also trivial by definition. So the only difficult thing is that we want to prove this guy, right? So we want to construct a isomorphism. So let's call it phi bar, right? So at each element in the in the this guy. Uh, okay, so let me denote n to be kernel phi. Okay, so this phi bar, uh, how I define it? This element in this guy is basically x h, right? So x h, which x it belongs to g. So I just define this guy to map to what? Map to uh, phi of x. Okay. So this is the proof. So basically, for each element, right, in the left hand side called xh, I map into phi of x, right, in the right hand side. And I call this map is called phi bar. Okay. So how what I need to show is that the phi bar is uh, is what? Is uh, well defined. And also, second is that phi bar is 1, 1. The third one is phi bar is on two, right? And the fourth one is phi bar is homomorphic. Uh, if these are true, then by definition, there are the isomorphism group. Okay, so, uh, but this is almost trivial. Okay, so the first one, let's prove that the uh, phi bar is on two, right? Because by definition, right? This guy is called, this guy mapped to image phi. So image phi is basically uh, on two, right? Because I only take the on two part. 
Okay, and the uh, five bars homomorphism is also trivial, right? Because let's say h is y h, right? Five because h is normal, so I can swap this guy become x y h h. It's really good. Five x y h h is h, right? So <laughs> this is just normal, right? That's already well homomorphism. So uh, the third and the fourth are trivial. How about uh, this guy? Why five bars well defined? So as I mentioned, uh, what is the left hand side well defined? If x h equals y h means that uh, x y inverse belongs to h, right? But this tell you what? This tell you that. Uh, okay, sorry, I should use n. Uh, I'm stupid. Yeah, I should use n. Yeah, I should use h here. Uh, so h is a kernel now. Okay, so x y inverse belongs to h means that uh, phi of x. Uh, because they are kernel, right? So phi of y inverse belongs to identity, right? So. Right, so if they are the same, uh, sorry, if they are well the same, okay, so by, uh, by the way, I also prove this one one, right, because this means that they are, if they are the same, oh, sorry, uh, if they are the same, on the right hand side, uh, sorry, on the left hand side, then uh, they will form the same, so they are well defined. Okay, so finally, we want to prove this one one. So one one means that if x, uh, if phi of x different from phi of y, then the uh, x, y inverse, and the x must be equals to y. This is called one one, right? But by definition, what we should prove is that uh, what we should prove is that uh, if phi of x equals to phi of y, then they should be the same at the left hand side, right? So they should be x h equals to y h. But this is trivial, right? Because this is means that x y inverse is one, so x y inverse is basically belongs to h, and then you will indeed prove this, right? Just times h, okay? So one one is also trivial and uh, well defined. It's almost trivial, right? Phi sum two phi homomorphism very easy. Okay, so combine the fact. This is the final, uh, the first homomorphism theory, the uh, first isomorphism theory. So from this, uh, we can prove that uh, we can use the first uh, proof seconds, first proof third, and uh, the uh, yeah, and uh, we prove the first. Uh, okay, so this is a uh, very trivial. I think three theorems also very easy once you understand how to. Use the first one by constructing the the most uh, easiest uh, natural map. Okay, I will see you guys in the next videos. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.